Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CDM. Well, um, just a quick update here. Just been playing around the last couple of days with finishing off the software for the uh, CW rig. So that's just combining the um, the Morse decoder there uh, with the the software required to drive the SI35351, uh, SI5351, uh, making sure that they uh, play nicely together, and they do, which is good. Uh, just finishing off there the. Um, the decoder to convert the 700 hertz uh, to a digital system for the um, for the Arduino. So that's all going now uh, based on the 567 chip uh, tuned for 700 hertz, uh, and then just playing around with the Yeni 5534 and the LM380 based um, um, audio amplifier. Um, still got to play around with that one. But what I wanted to do with this particular video was to talk about um, taking a detour uh, on what I'm currently doing now. Recently I've received quite a few uh, requests for advice and information on, on where I started um, with the homebrew um, and to, I guess to give, like I say, some, a bit of advice on where I started, you know, where I got my knowledge from um, so others could do it too. Now I've said all along that these videos here are, are not tutorials, that this is purely just me playing with electronics and doing a, um, I guess, a video uh, vlog of where I'm going for interest. But the underlying reason why I am putting all this information up on YouTube, as well as putting the, uh, the schematics and the other uh, written documentation up onto the blog, is to encourage others to, to give homebrew a, um, a go. And I've said you know, many times, uh, I'm no expert, and if I can do it, then really anybody can. So in keeping with, with that um, idea and theme, I am going to take a detour, or it is my intent to take a detour from this radio to build a, uh, a rig that essentially I started with, with way back. Um, if I go way, way back, then yes, I, I played around with uh, crystal oscillators uh, and trying to get those to be uh, temperature stability, you know, yada, yada, yada. Um, but more recently, um, with actually starting to build um, transceivers, where I started um, was the double side band suppressed carrier um, transceiver. So that's what I intend to do uh, as a detour from this current project here. So like I say, double side band suppressed carrier. Now I acknowledge um, that this is inefficient in regards to um, uh, space, that you are using twice the bandwidth needed. However, it does make for a very simple circuit and I would argue that as amateur radio operators here and, and encouraging people to, to build radios and to, and to play around, that it's a great starting point. Um, so I think it's a good idea and, th and that's what I'm going to do. So um, I've always got a, uh, a, 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 I like 80 meters so um, I can see it being at least 80 meters. Um, I think because I can, or we can make more the point, uh, plug in and plug out filters nice and easily. We might as well make it 40 meters as well, so 80, 40 meters. Um, so, so the other aim is to use, uh, so so it's accessible to as many people as I can, um, is to try and make this using simple and readily available components. So just sort of quickly running through the block diagram. Um, and sort of talking briefly about that. Um, so the antenna system here coming in, uh, I'm also talking about that now. I've, I've also received some questions about what antennas am I using here in the setup. So um, seems like a good opportunity to fold into this particular build a uh, talk about that. Um, I use here on the, on the house um, half-wave dipoles, but out in the bush uh, it's a uh, in-fed half-wave. So um, either raw for this particular build, but we'll cover that off. Um, in terms of the, the RF amplifier coming in, uh, again, keep it nice and simple, 3904, uh, as opposed to, say, a J310, so we'll keep it nice and easily and readily available parts for that. Uh, coming into the, uh, the mixer, um, what I'm thinking there is, um, yes, I could use, say, the SBL1, but I'm not going to. Um, I, will, I will put this into the basket of um, a little bit too difficult to get hold of um, and arguably not that cheap. So let's not do that. Um, so what I do intend to do is to 
uh, make up from scratch uh, a, a diode ring mixer or you know, double balance mixer here. Um, yes, I could use uh, more appropriate components such as the uh, the, the one in 60 or an OA91 uh, for the diodes. Oops, excuse me. Oops, you daisy. Um, but I think for, for simplicity and again in keeping with uh, you know, readily available parts we use a, a 1N uh, 4148 and we'll go through the method I use here right or wrong um, for matching those or finding four that have very similar characteristics um, so we'll go through that uh, we'll use a couple of um, uh, FT37-43 uh, based transformers there with the trifolar windings um, so we'll go through all that. So that'll, that's what I'm thinking about for uh, the mixer. Uh, in terms of the, I'll come back to the, um, the local, local oscillator. In terms of the amplifier itself, uh, I can see that being uh, two stages. Again, keeping things nice and simple. Uh, a 3904 uh, audio amplifier there as a, a, a pre-driver. And then uh, a nice simple chip the LM386. Been around for donkey's years. Yes, um, it's got some noise issues, but hey, it's it's cheap, it's really available. Um, as opposed to going for, say, the NE5534 or the LM380. Equally easy to use, um, but I think for this particular one we'll go with the, uh, the tried and proven and, like I say, readily available LM386 uh, into a small speaker. Um, uh, as opposed to, or potentially, um, um, some low impedance headphones. Now, for the the oscillator there, um, and th it, it will because. Not quite sure why she's talking to me. Never mind. Um, I think for this one here, I I am going to class the uh, the SI5351 is a, an easily obtainable part. Um, you can get these from all over the place now and you know they are cheap and uh, readily and easily available to get them off um, things like Aliexpress so I'm going to stick with using that as opposed to um, uh, an analog based um, oscillator uh, of course have that driven with just a nice simple cheap uh, Arduino here this is just one out of the junk box I'm always use this as opposed to uh, one of the smaller form factors you know the nano or or the like um, so look to use that now the screen um, yes I could go for um, a TFT you know 2.2 or you know 3.5 inch one uh, I, I can be swayed on that but the worry I've got is um, of course I'll make all the code available up on the blog but um, if you don't get exactly the right um, driver or the right screen with the right library it, it, it can get difficult and, and a lot of questions come in about you know trying to make the screen work so for simplicity again it's sort of keeping this at a, at a, a nice easy level um, I'm just going to go with a, a tried and proven uh, 16 by 2 line LCD nice and easy uh, making it even easier by using um, the I2C uh, backplane there to convert uh, the big long edge connector into four wires, uh, uh, two data and the power. Um, again, just to keep things nice and easy and simple and uh, and repeatable. So that's what I'm going to do for that. Um, so now for the the transmit side, um, what I'm going to do there, I'm going to oops, I did it wrong way. Um, I'm going to use, uh, again, to keep things nice and easy and available, uh, a little electric uh, insert there. So there'll be the microphone, uh, nice and simple. Uh, have that going into a, uh, again, a 3904 based um, amplifier. And then have that feeding into our, our mixer there and producing our RF out. So the RF out, um, I can see that going into... Uh, a good two or three stages, probably three stages of, of amplification before being transmitted. Again, using um, easy parts, uh, either a 3904 or maybe the 2N222A uh, for the pre-drivers, and then for the power amplifier over here, uh, either um, a BD139 um, or potentially um, an IRF510. Um, I'm probably going to sway on the side of, of keeping things simple. Oh, I don't know, um, the two minds here of which way to go. Probably the BD139, um, 
it just reduces any all the biasing requirements for the IRF 510. Um, it's, it's purely going to be a QRP rig here, so no high power. Uh, again, in keeping of that sort of nice and simple uh, first build radio to sort of um, wet the feet, so to speak, um, and to sort of build these modules individually and bolt them together uh, into a uh, into a working radio. Um, and of course, I've missed a, I missed here the uh, the filters. So bandpass filter on the input. Uh, and then a, uh, a low pass filter uh, on the output of the, the power amplifiers before before going out. Um, yeah, so that's what that's you know, like I said, that's my intent as a as a detour from the current build, uh, and hopefully that'll um, I guess have a what's the word um, have a, have a, an easily uh, achievable and relatively simple build um, for those who are looking to get into homebrew. Um, if people think I'm barking mad, please feel free to uh, leave comments in the um, on the vid. But uh, like I say, um, this is where I started, so it'd be quite nice to sort of to go through that again uh, and to help others um, get into uh, into homebrew. Anyway, so that's what I'm thinking. I um, I won't labour it anymore. Um, thanks all for watching, and I will see you uh, in the comments. Otherwise, in the next video. Cheers all.